Welcome to The Naomi Show. Hi there. Well, I'm joined by Marla Martinson from LA in USA today, and we're talking about her life experiences. She's actually written a book called The Diary of the Beverly Hills Matchmaker, and um, she's a certified life coach, a prestige matchmaker. Marla, so good to see you. So good to see you, Naomi. Good day. (laughs) Good day. (laughs) Now, tell me, why did you write this book? Well, I wrote this book because my first two books, Excuse Me, Your Soulmate is Waiting and Good Date, Bad Date, were relationship advice books with all of my tips and advice, and they were great. But after that, I really didn't have anything left to say about dating to to teach people, but people were very curious about uh, my life as a matchmaker, how I got into it, what really goes on, how I do it. So I decided to write my memoir which is like a chick lit novel. It's very funny, uh, but it's all true. And people are always shocked to, to when they read it, they say, this is really true. This is really your life. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? The LA dating scene is a little unusual, isn't it? Can you describe what makes it so unusual, so a different? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's because all of the most beautiful people in the world come here. Um, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of beautiful people. There's a lot of excitement and the movie, the movies and all that. So the men all want the most beautiful girls because they see them all here. And the girls all want the most successful guys because they see the red carpet events and the celebrities and the private jets and the events. So they all hope to get in on that. And it's, it gets kind of hard to please my clients because they're all <laughs> really looking for the bigger, better deal. Well, see, that's the thing. It does seem a little shallow if it's a fair word to use, do you think? Absolutely. It, it, it can be very shallow, And um, but that's the business I'm in. I, I work for a well, now I have my own business, but if I want to make money in the matchmaking business in Los Angeles, I really kind of have to stick to that template. The more successful, uh, upscale financially men who are looking for very beautiful women, but I only work with people who are serious about finding a long-term relationship or marriage. So it's no hanky-panky. It's G-rated <laughs> and all about love. <laughs> but over the years, obviously, you've had some fairly bizarre expectations from your clients, haven't you? I mean, you write about this in your book. Yeah, in the book, for example, there are men who will not date anyone with it's smaller than a D chest size or only women with blue eyes or only brown eyes. Are you kidding? Uh, Did they literally yeah. say only blue eyes? Yes, uh, one and I would and I wanted to know why. I said, "Well, why?" And he and the guy said, "Because I can see her soul." And I'm like, "Come on, you can't not." <laughs> what about all those poor girls with brown eyes or green eyes? <laughs> And then I also had a guy who only wanted brown-eyed girls, and that was it. So um, I really tried to stay away from matching people with eye, from eye color or horoscope, you know, <laughs> zodiac signs, because it's really um, difficult to do. You know, there's some simple things. If somebody wants a certain religion, Christian or Jewish or whatever, that's not a problem. If they do prefer a blonde or brunette, that's generally not a problem. So basic preferences, but sometimes they, when they just get a list that's too long, it really makes it uh, impossible possible and they're they stay alone well but on top of that um the body is also a real issue isn't it um when you're matchmaking some people and people have some fairly sort of huge expectations there i know that in your book you talked about some guys who will only date women of a certain weight yep i had a guy well the guys all want slim which is understandable men are visual and they want a girl that they're going to be attracted to and that's how men get excited is by liking what they see so if a woman in shape that's reasonable harder to do here in america what do we have 50 60 70 percent of our population's overweight Mm -hmm. so that's even hard to find but um, one guy, I matched him with a beautiful girl. She was 115 pounds at five feet six. She was a beauty queen. And after the date, he said, well, she was very pretty. She was very nice. If only she could have been a bit slimmer. Oh so I was frustrated goodness. and mad. So I found him a girl who was five, six, 105 pounds, which is very <laughs> thin. I mean, I, you know, oh like goodness. skeletal. And uh, afterwards he says she was very cute and everything. If only she could have been a bit slimmer. Well, oh, I just, went crazy. Just go and <laughs> find a skeleton. <laughs> I don't have anybody slimmer. And I said, but you know what? 
I'll be trolling the morgues for a choice corpse for you to date. <laughs> Just find a skeleton. <laughs> it's outrageous. It's really incredible. I mean, it must be very challenging trying to connect people who are looking for the right partner for them, but they're looking for their soulmate. What are some of the challenges that you come up against? Yeah, I would say unrealistic expectations. You know, mm. people want the whole package and they have this long list of desires that they expect. But I want to say, well, who do you, is somebody going to want to meet you? You know, what are you bringing to the table yeah. as well? Because there'll be, you know, men who are, want a woman 20 or 30 years younger who looks, you know, maybe like Heidi Klum and they would maybe rate a four or a five looks wise. So they don't feel that the women should care what they look like or what they're bringing to the table, but they want the choice ladies. And those ladies are dating you know the Brad Pitts of the world or hanging yeah. at the Playboy Mansion so it's a little tough but I have I have will say that I have had many couples get married and go on and have long-term relationships get married have children and, and that's why I keep doing it because I do have a lot of success uh, stories as well yeah I mean that's the thing isn't it and I mean that was must be it must be frustrating when you're trying to put together people who have so many restrictions on what they're looking for and that must be incredibly challenging but there's the other element which must be so satisfying for you when you actually put together people who, who hook up and they're just so happy. Tell us about yeah. some of those. Oh, I had, um, in, in my book, I, uh, Diary of the Beverly Hills Matchmaker, I do have one wedding that I go to and I uh, describe it. And it was just wonderful. They were so appreciative. They had a rose sitting at the chair for me when during the um, ceremony. Then I got to the table for dinner and there was a beautiful gift for me. They toasted me with champagne in front of everyone. And, and that was just fabulous. And I know they're very, very happy. Another couple um, got married and had a baby and showed me the pictures. And so th that's just fabulous and I still I was actually when I was in New York a couple weeks ago for the book expo I met up with a, a guy who I'd matched with a girl out here in LA um, they fell in love they he took her to Paris for the French Open and they just got back and they're going to get oh, married wow. in um, New Year's Eve oh it sounds beautiful <laughs> now what are the key elements when you're trying to match people what are the key elements people need to have in mind when they do go to a matchmaker when they well, when you go to a matchmaker, I would say first take a. Um, for example, in my book, excuse me, your soulmate is waiting. I have even some exercises that people can do to get ready for this. You want to make sure that your baggage is cleared up, mm. um, that you have the mindset to meet the right person, that you're not still bitter or or depressed over an, an ex or a divorce. Um, get in your best shape that you can be healthy and um, get your expectations in line and then go to a matchmaker and do try to be open. Um, sometimes the matchmakers show photos, sometimes they don't. Sometimes everyone doesn't take a good picture. So mm. I've seen men, that I've seen their pictures sometimes before I met with them and thinking in my mind, well, if I was single, I wouldn't be attracted to him in a million years. Then I met him in person and I thought, oh my God, he's so charming, he's so yeah. sexy. The picture was totally wrong. So trust uh, the matchmaker too if they say no listen you've got to meet this person give it a go yeah or maybe take another picture <laughs> take another what picture? take another picture of these guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Marla, that is fantastic. And of course, you can find out everything about Marla's experiences as a matchmaker in the Diary of a Beverly Hills Matchmaker. There's the, there's the cover of it there. It's available on Amazon. So, um, so and get yourself a copy. It's a, it's a fantastic read. I've seen some excerpts of it. I haven't got the book yet. I've been waiting for it to come in the mail. But um, yeah, get a copy of that. It's very, very funny. And look, Marla, thank you so much. Great Thank to you, speak Naomi. to you, and I'll speak to you again next time. Okay. Okay. Bye. Your love life, let's talk about it at naomishow.com.